Good evening, thank you so much for turning on, on the DVD. Uh, Neil's away this week uh, with, with Maggie, I think they've gone to Scotland for the week, uh, so do remember them uh, in your prayers this, this coming week, they'll have a good time and, and get refreshed and, and just enjoy uh, being uh, together and having a good holiday together. Um, so we're going to continue uh, the series uh, on Colossians uh, together. I think Neil spoke really well last week uh, about um, our marriages and, and how we should reflect Jesus uh, in our marriages, the responsibilities that we have as husbands husband and wives you know in our marriage to make our marriages the best ever uh, because Jesus has, is in the center of, of them um, and this week we're going to be looking at um, uh, being a, a Christian if you like in the workplace and how important it is for us to display and reflect Jesus also uh, in the workplace um, but before we do that I just wanted to remind you of of who we are because right at the well, middle of chapter 3 Paul says therefore God's chosen people holy and dearly loved and that's what we are aren't we folks we are chosen people uh, the Bible says you know John 3 16 that God so loved the world so if he loved the world he loved everything in it he chose you, he chose to, to, to send his son for you to die for, you, for your sins. So you are chosen. And because of Jesus, you are made holy. And because you are chosen and because you are holy, he did it because he dearly loved you. So we need to really take that on board that we are a chosen people. We are holy. We are dearly loved. So we have a responsibility if you like, you know, in our marriages and in our workplace and in our communities to be those sort of people because God has made us holy. So we have to be holy in our, in our different environments. So when we look at the, uh, this, this chapter, this verses here in Colossians, it, it says in Colossians 3, uh, let me put my glasses off, Slaves, obey your earthly master in everything and do it not only with the eyes is on you, and to win favour, but with sincerity of your heart and with reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord and not for man. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be paid for his wrongs, and therefore there is no favoritism. Masters, provide for your slaves what is right and fair, because you know that you have a master in heaven. Further on, uh, you know, in the Bible, there's a story of Philemon and Onesimus. And that's a real example how that the gospel may have an impact in that environment, in that working relationship. We, we're not too sure of what Onesimus did, uh, but he ran away, so it must have been pretty bad. And then he met Paul. He became a Christian and it changed him completely. And Philemon, you know, was asked to, to forgive Onesimus because he was a chosen person. Uh, he, he was a holy person. He was a dearly loved person. He was a, you know, a man of God. And again, I wonder how many folk in, in our working place, we, we have that Onesimus person in, in our place that just with the gospel could change him completely. So we need to reflect who we are in our workplace. We need to work with diligence. Uh, we need to be we're working for the hours that we're, we're paid for because that reflects who Jesus is. And it says there, uh, you know, that uh, we are serving Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? That we are serving Jesus Christ in our workplace. You know, the things that we say reflect Jesus in our workplace. Those are the things that we do reflect Jesus in our workplace. It's so important that we just show who we are, because we are set apart, we, we are a holy people to deflect, reflect who we are in our workplace. The other thing is, 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 is our heart, you know, that we do it with the heart of Christ. I'm sure for many of us in our, our workplace, there's other, perhaps other people that are perhaps a, a bit lazy and aren't doing what they should be doing in the workplace, but we should be showing them how to do that because we are God's chosen people. We are a holy nation. You know, we are dearly loved. And I'm sure for, for, for many of you, uh, you're perhaps you're in, in a work situation where it's difficult to obey and honor your boss. 
And Jesus isn't asking you to do that, but but we can do that through him. He will give you all the help you need to honour and and, uh, be reliable uh, to your boss in the workplace. But he is asking us to go that extra mile in in our workplace, to show that we are different in our workplaces. And also, in our workplace, okay, we carry the name of Jesus. That is so important. You know, when I was baptised some years ago, I got baptised in the name of Jesus. I confess to everybody there that in the name of Jesus, I am a new creation. I am different. So we need to, again, embrace the name of Jesus in the workplace. Because the name of Jesus will, will change situations in our workplaces. And it says earlier in the, in the chapter, put on, clothe yourself with with gentleness, kindness, humility, in everything that we do. For those of you perhaps who are looking after staff, perhaps you have your own business, you know, again, we are, it says it in, in, in this, this, this chapter, okay, there, there's no favoritism. Whether you're an employee or an employer, Jesus looks upon you the same. You should be acting the same. Perhaps if, if you're a, you know, a, um, a boss or, or a person who's in charge of staff, you need to be a bit like, like, like a Philemon. You know, Philemon had every right to really punish Onesimus for his, his sin, but he didn't. He chose to forgive him and move on. I hope that's helped uh, for you tonight, for your discussions tonight. Enjoy your time and uh, bless you and take care. Amen.